Hello students, welcome to the lecture series of fluid mechanics. Myself, Dhruv Patel. In our last lecture, we have learned about basics of the centrifugal pump. In today's lecture, we will learn about various types of head, efficiencies and various examples of the centrifugal pump, right? So first of all, what do you mean by various types of head in centrifugal pump? So for the centrifugal pump, we have to measure head in the terms of distance, right? Head in the terms of distance or we can say efficiency in the terms of head. So first of all, let us see various types of head of the centrifugal pump. So as shown in this sketch, right? First of all, let us revise the what do you mean by centrifugal pump and what is basic purpose and working of the centrifugal pump. So as you know, there will be a five components of the centrifugal pump. First component will be center of the shaft that is known as I. Second component will be impeller that is basically mounted on the shaft. So from the electricity shaft is rotated from the motor the shaft is rotated so impeller is rotated. Then spiral types of casing will be there as shown in this sketch. Spiral type of casing will be there then suction pipe, footstep valve or we can call it strainer and then delivery pipe right so that will be a five components of the centrifugal pump and for the pump basic purpose will be to store or to convey the water up in the higher level right so let us revise the various types of head for the centrifugal pump so first head will be suction head so as shown in this sketch suction head will be represented by small h s that is known as suction head basically it is vertical distance between suction level that is known as sump so vertical distance between sump and center of the shaft that is this vertical distance between sump and center of the shaft that is known as suction head second one is delivery head that is known as hd that is basically vertical distance between center of the shaft and above level of the pipe that is known as our destination that is known as delivery head right then static head that is represented by capital H as the static head that will basically a suction head plus delivery head so that is summation of these two that is known as static head if we take distance from our sump level to the our final destination level that is known as static head capital H into S right then manometric head so this is basically and very much important head regarding to centrifugal pump manometric head that means head imparted by the impeller in the ideal condition minus various types of losses so we can call manometric head as actual head delivered by the centrifugal pump in the working condition that is head imparted by impeller minus our various types of losses so from the our derivation in the last lecture head imparted by the impeller that will be vw2 u2 divided by g minus various types of head losses right so head losses will be various types like friction losses friction losses in the suction pipe friction losses in the delivery pipe as well as friction losses in the impeller right then where is the losses in the friction losses in the suction pipe that is known as hfs and hfd that means frictional losses in the delivery pipe right next one is manometric head can be represented by this equation also total head at the outlet minus total head at the inlet of the pump so we can represent total head that means p by rho g v square by 2 g plus z at outlet minus p by rho g plus v square by 2 g plus z at inlet so we can represent manometric head by this equation also right next one is various types of efficiency for centrifugal pump so basic construction of centrifugal pump will be like this as shown in this sketch when motor is connected to the shaft so from the electricity motor is rotated shaft is rotated from the shaft one impeller is connected on the shaft we can say this rotor or impeller from the rotor we can get centrifugal action and we will get water power in the terms of potential energy and at the outlet we will get water power clear students so first component or first compartment that is known as mechanical side that is related to motor and shaft and second compartment that is related to water that is known as hydraulic side so similar to turbine this is exactly opposite working of the turbine so at the inlet 
mechanical energy will be there and at the outlet water energy will be there right so this is compartment one mechanical side and this is compartment two hydraulic side so for our better understanding we will divide centrifugal pump action to the two compartment first will be our mechanical side in the mechanical side electricity or we can say shock power is converted to the centrifugal action of the impeller and in the second part impeller centrifugal action will be converted to the water power clear students now first of all mechanical efficiency so we can see in the mechanical side output by input in the mechanical side output is rotor that means rotor power divided by input is shock so shock power we can represent as rp divided by s P. Clear students in the mechanical efficiency then manometric efficiency so manometric efficiency that means actual manometric head in the actual working condition divided by maximum head imparted by water in the ideal condition so actual manometric head that will be represented by capital HM and ideal head in the ideal condition that is our equation VW2 U2 divided by G so from the simplification hm into g divided by vw2 u2 that will be our manometric efficiency right next one will be overall efficiency overall action of the centrifugal pump so in the output by input output of the centrifugal pump is water power that is represented by wp and input is represented by sub power that is known as s P. So at the output water is known as rho q g h that is potential energy of the water and at the input that is sub power right. So overall efficiency that means water power divided by sub power. So this is basically three efficiencies related to centrifugal pump. For easy and better understanding we have to divide overall action of the centrifugal pump into two segments. Remember this first one into shock power to the rotor power and second one will be rotor power to the water power. First side will be mechanical side, second side will be hydraulic side. So you can derive easily all the efficiency equations. Clear students? Now let us solve one basic example based on this efficiencies and various types of velocity triangles right. So in the given data a centrifugal pump having 36 centimeter as an outlet diameter outlet diameter that means D2. So here in the given data D2 outlet diameter that means 36 centimeter let us convert directly centimeter into meter so 0 0.36 meter and 18 centimeter at the inlet diameter so d1 will be 0 0.18 meter is to deliver water against the net head of 25 meter so manometric head that means 25 meter at 1 to double zero rpm so our rpm will be 1 to double zero the width at the outlet is 6 centimeter width at outlet that means width b at outlet b2 6 centimeter that will be 0 0.06 meter and flow velocity is constant remember this flow velocity is constant that will be vf1 is equal to vf2 the entry is radial and the impeller vents are bent backward at 30 degree vents angle 30 degree to the outlet that means beta 2 that will be 30 degree manometric efficiency is given to so manometric efficiency eta m is equal to 90 degree determine width of the impeller at inlet that means b1 angle of the van at inlet that means beta 1 and discharge from the pump that will be q so for the centrifugal pump alpha 1 will be 90 degree always so we can write alpha 1 is equal to 90 degree right so first of all we can find width at an inlet from the discharge we can find discharge from the manometric efficiency equation right and beta 1 from the inlet and outlet velocity triangles so let us solve this from the inlet and outlet velocity triangle we know about it u1 is equal to pi d1 n by 60 right so pi d1 that means 0 0.18 rpm that will 1 to double 0 divided by 60 so our u1 will be 11.31 meter per second that is tangential velocity of the impeller blade at inlet similar way for the outlet section u2 that will be pi d2 n by 60 from the given data d2 will be 0 0.36 rpm will be 1 to double 0 and 60 
that means our u2 will be 22.62 meter per second right now from the given data manometric efficiency is given so our manometric efficiency will be total manometric head divided by ideal head that is vw2 u2 divided by g that means hm into g divided by vw2 u2 clear students so this is manometric efficiency hm into g divided by vw2 u2 so from the inlet from the given data manometric efficiency is given so we can we have to find vw2 is g into hm divided by manometric efficiency into u2 so g is 9.81 manometric head is 25 manometric efficiency is 0.9 and u2 velocity is already find out 22.62 so our vw2 component that will be 12.047 meter per second clear students now from the inlet and outlet velocity triangle so as we know about it from the centrifugal pump theory we have to draw inlet and outlet velocity triangle clear students remember this here from inlet and outlet velocity triangle so first of all let us draw inlet velocity triangle as usual so we have to draw v1 as a first then u1 then from the v1 and u1 we can draw vr1 angle between v1 and u1 that is known as alpha 1 and angle between u1 and vr1 that is known as beta 1 here vw1 is equal to 0 because v1 itself a vertical component clear so in the outlet velocity triangle first of all we have to compare two values u2 and vw2 here u2 is 22.62 and VW2 is 12.047. So here U2 is very much greater than VW2. So from the outlet velocity triangle, we have to draw U2 as larger component as usual. So we can draw VR2 here. From the VR2, we can draw U2, VR2 and U2. So from beginning to end, we can draw resultant velocity V2. So two components of V2 will be there always vertical component Vf2 and horizontal component Vw2. From the our equation U2 is very much greater than Vw2. So see in this sketch U2 is very much greater than Vw2. Clear students? So we have to find beta 2. So 10 beta 2 from this triangle that will be opposite side Vf2 divided by this equation x that means u2 minus vw2 so divide by u2 minus vw2 right so our vf2 will be 22.62 that is u2 minus vw2 12.047 into 10 30 so our vf2 that will be 6.104 meter per second as we know about it vf1 is equal to vf Two. clear students so from the vf1 is equal to vf2 we can write discharge will be area into flow velocity so area will be pi db because spiral types of casing will be there so area will be pi d into b and flow velocity that means vf1 here vf1 is equal to vf2 so we can write discharge is similar to in the both hand side so pi d1 b1 into vf1 is equal to pi d2 b2 into vf2 right in above equation vf1 is similar to the vf2 so vf1 and vf2 will be cancelled out pi is cancelled out so d1 b1 is equal to d2 b2 we have to find b1 so b1 is equal to b2 into d2 by d1 right so b2 is already given 0.06 d2 is 0.36 and d1 is 0.18 so our width at inlet that means 0.12 meter clear students and next one is discharge so we can find discharge by the pi d1 b1 so discharge we will put value of b1 into this equation so discharge will be pi d1 b1 into vf1 so d1 is 0.18 b1 is 0.12 and vf1 is 0 6.104 so our discharge will be 0.4143 meter cube per second clear students and at the last we have to find angle beta 1 at inlet so from the inlet velocity triangle 10 beta 1 opposite side vf1 and nearer side u1 so vf1 in divided by u1 
so vf1 we have already found out 6.1 and u1 is 11.31 so our tan beta 1 will be 28.35 degree